Why are they pushing this? So it's BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard. They're using 20 plus trillion dollars of our money. And when I say our money, it literally means our money, most people's money, without them knowing it. Their business model is to charge fees on how many assets they manage. So it sounds like it's all coming from BlackRock because they own, what, 80% of the companies or the majority shares of 80% of the companies on the S&P. Why are they pushing this? So it's BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, Invesco, you go down the list, but it's like an ESG cartel in this country. Okay, so, so here's the way this works. And so, so I've, I've gone deep on this issue. Mm-hmm. So if I'm going into too much depth or detail that's boring, just cut me off and we can move on. But this is a, this is my mission for the last three years before running for president. This is what I did, okay, is fight this stuff. Two of my books are about this and the most recent company I found at Strive was about fighting against this by offering an alternative. So what happens is the largest asset managers in the world, just take the three biggest ones, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. They're using 20 plus trillion dollars of our money. And when I say our money, it literally means our money, most people's money, without them knowing it. It's happened to me. It's happened to probably most retirees. Their own money is invested in funds managed by these passive fund managers, BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard, that are using that capital to vote for policies and advocate for policies in corporate America's boardrooms that most Americans, including the owners of capital, do not agree with and which do not advance their best financial interests. I'll give you examples. Voting for racial equity audits at companies like Apple and Home Depot. Scope three emissions caps and climate plans at companies like Chevron and Exxon. These are not policies that advance the success of those companies. These are policies that advance a one-sided progressive agenda. And the dirty little secret is they're not using somebody else's or their money to do it. They're using our money to do it. It is happening every day in this country. It is the largest aggregation of capital in private hands in human history and they're using it to advance one-sided political agendas that Congress could not pass through the front door. This is a large-scale violation of fiduciary duty, in my opinion. It is a large-scale antitrust, anti-competitive violation, because these three firms are the largest, really relevant shareholders that vote shares at Microsoft and Apple, at Disney and Paramount Pictures, at Pepsi and Coca-Cola. You go down the list, you're taught that you have a free market economy. Well, when both sides of the competition are effectively controlled by the same set of actors, that's not competition. That's an oligopoly, especially when it comes to, it's not an oligopoly on products. They're still competing on products. But it's a monopoly on ideas, environmental and social agendas. So now back to your question, why are they doing it? Answer. Their business model is to charge fees on how many assets they manage, okay? And the biggest people directing assets, dollars to BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard are institutions like CalPERS, pension funds, the California State Pension Fund or the New York State Pension Fund. And what those government actors have said, these are government actors now, is to say that we won't let you manage the money of this pension fund Now, the individual pensioners in California's pension system, I bet, don't know this, but that you don't get to manage our money as BlackRock unless you adopt these racial and gender ideologies and that you vote shares accordingly. Oh, and that's not just with California's money, unless you do it with all of the money that you manage. That's the dirty little secret. So my most recent book, Capitalist Punishment, is all about this woke ink. My first book touches on it more lightly. And this is a scam. I mean, this is the largest scale breach of trust. I would call it, go so far as to call it a form of financial fraud in the 21st century. Let me dub it down for me. So this is the, this is our elected officials. I'm just going to say something really quickly. It is hard to dumb it down. Okay. And the reason it's hard to dumb it down is it is designed to be complicated for a reason. It is designed to be complicated to hide it from you. It is designed to sound boring to hide it from you. So the complexity is on purpose. But, but I will try to be simpler on it. Let me, let me yeah, you try the way I understand yeah. it is you have elected officials in California who are telling BlackRock that they will not allow them to manage the pension funds from 
the state of California unless they adopt this woke agenda. As they vote their shares and through advocate. all of the states. Yes. So they have to manage all of the pension funds uh, this, in the same manner. They have to vote the shares. They have to vote the shares and speak as a shareholder in the boardrooms in the same manner. That's right. Because when BlackRock is buying shares in Pepsi or in Disney or in Target or in Nike, they speak with one voice, right? They don't speak with California's voice and then Ohio's voice and then Iowa's voice. No, they're speaking with one voice. So they're speaking on behalf of the voice that the biggest dog in their client base, CalPERS, is pushing them around to do. And it's not just CalPERS, it's the state of New York. It's European pension funds, it's Canadian pension funds, right? That's exactly what's driving the invisible hand of the market, no. It is the invisible hand of left-wing government. So that's the dirty little secret. So many Republicans who talk about this issue, again, they say sloppy things, right? They're investing in woke companies. That's not the problem. The problem is they're investing in all companies, but causing all companies to have to adopt these policies, right? That's the real problem. And, and so I told you about how I challenged and stood up to Big Pharma. I stood up to this ESG industrial complex again as an entrepreneur. I founded a company called Strive. People say, oh, are you then gonna just invest in the good companies and not in the woke ones? No guys, that's not the way it works. These are index funds. And so the BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard launched. So, so Strive launched index funds whose purpose was to offer the same kinds of index funds that the BlackRocks and Vanguards of the world do, but with a key difference, to vote shares and to speak as a shareholder with a different voice in those boardrooms, to give those CEOs air cover, to say that not all shareholders are demanding this, to say that here's the message to you guys, corporate America. As a shareholder, focus exclusively on your products and services for profit to maximize value for your shareholders, period. That's it. And that's a different voice. So the, it went, once Strive came onto the scene, then BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard started to have to get on their back foot, right? That's, what, that's how you drive change in this country. It's not just through government. It is through competition. And so that was my career, right? Driving change, you know, calling Big Pharma's bluff, driving Behavioral change there, capturing opportunity. Same thing with Strive, bring an alternative to BlackRock. I, I believe in the same thing in tech. I was one of the first private investors in Rumble, which is challenging YouTube. I believe in driving change through the market as an entrepreneur, but we're not gonna be able to really do this until we fix the head of the snake, which is the deep state in the federal government itself, which is what sends me on this mission I'm on now. And. The fact of the matter is I'd rather be doing this as an entrepreneur, but I can't get that job done, that job done through the private sector, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing today. When, when did you start Strive? I started Strive, it uh, feels like an eternity ago, but it was last year, actually. Last year? How much yeah. money under management? Last January. The first fund only launched in August. It's approaching a billion dollars. It's north of 800, maybe I, I've been tracked recently, maybe 800 plus million dollars approaching, rapidly approaching a billion. It, it isn't even a year since launching the first fund. The first fund launched late August or so last year. JP Morgan, when it got into the ETF business, took two years to cross a billion dollars. And so I don't believe in failing at the things I do. Congratulations. I believe in success. Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you, man. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.